Hi, my name is Sean Mathis. I'm the Chief Remote Pilot at Air Inspect Australia. Today we're actually doing a field test of the Rainpoo D2M oblique camera. So it's essentially got five lenses, each lens 26 megapixels, um, which totals to 130 megapixel. The objective of doing this test is actually see when we fly higher to reduce our time in the field and, and actually get access to more difficult areas. For example, when we have reduced distances between buildings, which is typically where I am at the moment. So it's probably between four and five meters between each of the buildings, which if we're going to create a model of that, it's going to be, it's fairly difficult. You have to do a lot of manual steps to actually achieve that. So hopefully using an oblique camera like the D2M, we're able to achieve that much quicker in the field. And um, yeah, so we're going to go through the specs of the unit, do the field test, and then walk through what the model looks like. Let's have a look at what's in the box. Firstly, we've got a hard case, and now we're looking at some cables, which we can have a look at a little later. Now let's have a look at the D2M payload. We have five lenses. The middle um, lens, the deal lens, points at 90 degrees, or straight down. Uh, then we have four oblique lenses pointing at 45 degrees. Each of these lenses are 26 megapixel, which add up to a total of 130 megapixel. Each of these lenses, when an image is captured, produces five images for each lens. So now we're looking at the storage device, which is 64 gigabytes. This plugs into the payload, uh, comes in the box, and very easy to connect. Um, and then we use this device which plugs into the computer which allows you to transfer files from the device into the computer. Um, very easy to connect, you can either use a powered cable or just a USB type A as you can see. So we've had a look at the lens, um, the next step is really to just mount that onto the M300 and start using it and um, they've got a very simple um, location where we're actually going to have a few buildings and the idea of that is actually to capture um, what it looks like between the buildings and naturally the actual detail um, of each of those locations. So now that we've actually mounted the D2M, there's one thing to notice when it actually um, turns on, um, or when we turn on the M300, I should say, the uh, uh, it faces essentially the front. So that that's pretty normal. Um, it's not going to face it down um, until you take off, but when you start the mission it defaults to 90 degrees looking straight down so you don't actually need to do anything other than pick your mission so now we've um, created our mission so it's a little over three minutes in time we're taking um, a couple hundred photos as you can see and the acreage there is um, over four, four acres. So we're gonna run two different missions, uh, 90 degrees apart. That way we're gonna get a good cross section of the area we're interested in. So we've done our mission, now we've processed our data and we'll work through what the steps look like. We process the data using Bentley's um, context capture product, essentially brought in all the different photos that's been captured through our flight. And now we're actually looking at uh, the visual. So we're using Bentley Open City Planner 
and you can certainly use the data in any different visualization platform. Um, this is something that we like to use and this is um, you can customize this product how you see fit. Let's get into having a look. So you can click on start and this may look familiar. So now we're actually looking at the model um, that's been flown. Remember, if we were interested in actually getting more details, for example, in the roof, that's something we could focus on. But really what we want to, the value of something like an oblique camera, as I highlighted in, earlier in the video, is the actual gaps between these buildings. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. And ordinarily, you're not going to get that caliber of detail just flying a, a linear mission. So let me just show you the distance. So if you just measure the distance between these two points, that's just under six meters. And you can see it's got a fair bit of detail even on the windows. Even between this shed and the building, it's probably less about a meter. Yeah, one and a half meters. That normally would look like a marshmallow unless you actually went and captured some ground photography there. As you saw how we flew flew that mission. And again here, quite a narrow gap between the building. Let's measure that. It's about four meters. Let's look at something different. This is a tree area. So pretty good considering we didn't do anything special to fly underneath these trees. Uh, it's pretty much captured all of that. You can see, you can read um, the, what's written here along the parking area. You can see all the parking numbers and you've got trees right above it. So again here, very tight spaces, um, captured very much all of the actual facades of the building without having to concentrate in, in that area. what we're really looking at any sort of small areas how well it's captured that's that's really what I'm interested in because these are some of the challenges out in the field um, if you used something like a Zenmuse P1 um, to, to conduct emissions on your 300 you're definitely not going to get the detail that we've got here um, inside and the reason is nothing against the P1 it just doesn't have um, there's cameras in the angles that we've talked about. So as you um, heard before, you've got five lenses, you're in a deer and you've got your four, so that allows you to just fly in a linear um, motion and it's capturing the different angles that's able to sort of, s when we go into processing, stitch all of these detail that, you, that you're seeing. Yeah, as you can see, even the window seals there, it's quite, got a fair bit of detail. Oops, sorry. Let's go back to start there. Let's have a look. 
look at some of these tree lines again. So again, fair bit of detail, which is great. So there you go. Um, we can put this um, access, you can access this in, in the cloud. We'll share the link and um, feel free to have a use of it and provide any feedback. And um, yeah, and we'll share the processing steps next. Thanks for watching and um, we'll get on to part two and share that with you very shortly.